Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Ah, <laughs> welcome to another video, everyone. The video where the dream is realized. The dream bringing Delhi to Iceland. I'm so happy right now. I've just stopped for a spot of lunch, just driving down the main road, saw this river, saw there was a gravel track, drove down here. What a beautiful spot to stop, have some food, have a bit of a break before cracking on with the adventure proper, the landscape photography adventure proper. So now that I've had lunch, I've got a bit of a decision to make. You see, on this trip already, things have gone a bit wrong. Well, not really gone wrong, it's just things have happened and you kind of need to adapt. So originally, I was supposed to arrive here yesterday morning, so I'm already a day and a half behind. And there's this famous volcano that's been erupting for the past few weeks in Iceland. You've probably seen it all over social media. Well, as luck would have it, uh, last weekend it suddenly just stopped erupting, so that's no longer a thing, no longer a a point of interest worth photographing. So the original plan was for me to arrive here yesterday. I was going to drive north around the island over the course of about three days. So that would take me you on know, nice and easy, lots of photographic sites. And I was going to finish at the volcano where I was going to meet up with a group of mates, some of whom I'm sure you know, but now I'm late. The volcano's no longer erupting. So they're all heading into the Southern Highlands. So now I'm changing my plans. So instead of going north, I'm going to go along the South Coast which is beautiful, obviously. There are so many wonderful attractions, but we are in the middle of August, peak season. It's gonna be super, super busy, and I like the quieter parts of Iceland. So that's a bit of a shame, but I refuse to complain and I refuse to whinge. So that's it, we're hitting the South Road, and we're gonna take two days to get ourselves to the entrance of the Southern Highlands. But for now, we need to find a campsite. Uh, yeah, let me find a campsite, let's do that. Well, we're in Iceland, all right. We've taken this uh, dirt road, which is gonna ultimately take us to the main road and then to our campsite, but we are in thick fog. Visibility is down to about 50 meters or so. And it's, uh, it's just crazy. You can, can't see anything in front of me at all. And now it's beginning to feel like a real adventure. Oh. Oh, I just had to get out and show you this. It's absolutely incredible coming down that road in the mist and then we just drop out of the mist on this gravel road. We've gone over a mountain pass, obviously, and we've come down and the view just, ex oh man, it's so nice. It's just this expansiveness. It's grim, it's drizzly, it's cold, it's windy, but ah, oh, it's just fantastic. Let's have a look in here. So yeah, Iceland's beautiful, but I'll be honest with you, I've been feeling fairly uninspired driving here. Like I've got this kind of strange, overwhelming feeling to get where I'm going, which is a campsite. And it's like, why? Like the whole point of this trip is to be completely free and easy. And uh, I'm trying to get rid of this necessant need to go. Like, I don't know what it is, I don't know what, what, what the problem is, but I've had it all my life. Like for example, uh, when we were filming that quick piece of camera, when we were up in the clouds, as soon as I was done filming, I took a quick thumbnail shot, which was a thumbnail for last week's video. And I was like, there's this anxiousness to get going, just had to like, get going, go, 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 pack up, go, go, go. And I'm like, why? So anyway, I've stopped to uh, have a bit of a look around. It'd be nice to take a photograph actually. After all, that is why we're here. I said I wasn't gonna 
moan and, and grumble and complain on this trip, but I'm in a bad mood now. The car just pulled up uh, behind me and it's really windy and they opened all the doors and all this rubbish came flying out of the car and plastic bags went flying off and the couple just looked at each other nonchalantly with a little, you know, oh well, chuckle and then walked off. No attempt to chase down the bloody plastic bag. It really wound me up. It's just embarrassing for visitors. Makes people like me look bad. Anyway, got a photograph. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? I'm surrounded by mountains and then this striking bright orange lighthouse. And last time I was here, I had zero interest in that lighthouse. Couldn't care less. And all I was interested in shooting was the beach and the mountains. And now, as I'm walking towards the beach and the mountain viewpoint, and I look to my left, as you will see in a short minute, there's the lighthouse. And it was the first thing that struck me. So what, it must have been three years ago I was here last, maybe four years ago. And yeah, it's just funny how you change in that time. So there should be a lighthouse there. And that got my attention. So this is going to be a very quick handheld shot. Uh, there's really no need for a tripod in this wind. And it's going to be a square composition and it's going to be as simple and straightforward as you like. And it's my first shot in Iceland. And I don't care that it's not epic with mega lights and burning skies. This is the first thing that's made me think, right, I need to grab my camera. My, uh, my mood is getting worse. <laughs> There's people stood all around the lighthouse now. No one will move off. And I know it's not my lighthouse. Of course, people had to see it. And this guy you can see in my frame just totally blanked to me when I said hello. Just rude. Ah, oh, man, I'm in a bad... <laughs> I've suddenly gotten in such a bad mood. Right, all right, snap out of it. The light is beautiful and the sky is fantastic. That's what caught my attention. But at the minute, I just need people to move. <laughs> Oh, whatever. I'm just going to use the clone removal tool. <laughs> Everyone's gone apart from one couple on the right hand side, which if I could see their full bodies, their legs and everything, then it would actually add to the composition, but they're just torsos at the minute. And I don't know if this image is worth me faffing on and getting so triggered by. <laughs> I think I just need to go and rest, to be honest. I need, a, I need an evening off. <sighs> anyway shot looked great R really happy with it you know yeah nice little scene nice little scene I'm so happy. I was so grumpy before and I apologize, but now, I mean, how can you not be happy? Look at this, the sun's shining. We've got beautiful low light. We're here in Iceland, this location is fantastic. And I just stumbled upon it. I was just went for a drive towards these mountains here and I saw this gravel track turned off and it's just fantastic. So yeah, looks great from the air with the drone, whether or not there's a photograph from the ground remains to be seen, but that's the beauty of photography, just exploring and being open to whatever it is you see. Open to your creativity. but very challenging and as well as that I have to assume that all of this is tidal in fact it's almost certainly tidal therefore I have to assume it's low tide and that the tide is coming in so I don't know how long it'll be until I get cut off no idea so I'll be keeping an eye on the water levels and to be fair I don't think I'm in any danger worst case scenario I get wet feet and look a bit of a fool anyway this has caught my eye 
It's very difficult to shoot from ground level when you've seen it through the lens of the drone, but ah, uh, oh man, it's just so peaceful. I honestly, I don't even care if I get a photograph, just being out here trying is enough. So I've got my composition set up now. It's a square composition, beautiful leading line, fantastic geometric shapes. I love it. The color palette's nice as well. And I'm going to pop on a 10 stop filter, actually give it a bit of a clean. Yeah, I'm going to pop on a 10 stop filter to slow everything down and go for that really long exposure. And it's just going to give it such a nice ethereal look. Again, simplicity is always king in these situations. In my opinion, less is more. So let's get this dialed in. All right, wind's picking up a bit, which I'm not happy about. But we're going for a 60 second exposure, F11, 10 stop filter. And this should give such a nice ethereal look. And I'm just blocking the uh, lens from the, from the sun, just in case there's a bit of lens flare going on. All right, 60 seconds. Ah. <sighs> The light is beautiful, by the way, but unfortunately it's all in the wrong place. <laughs> all the good light is over here and it's amazing to look at, but there's not a composition that I can see. I think the old me would have been really frustrated and would have ran around like a headless chicken desperately trying to shoot something only to walk away disappointed. Ah, but I'm, man, I'm happy. I've got, they've got the orange lighthouse, which was, you know, I think the orange lighthouse shot was fine. <laughs> On my neck. <laughs> I was getting attacked by a sheep. <laughs> Bag falling on me. Yeah, Orange Lighthouse, yeah, it is what it is. There's something about it I quite like, but I really like the long exposure that I've just taken. And that's it. I mean, I'm happy to take all of this in. I mean, look where I am in the van, surrounded by beautiful landscapes. Anyway, I'm going to head back to the campsite and uh, debrief, I think, because today's been a, an interesting one. It took me a while to get going. Like, I wasn't excited about photography when getting off the ferry and driving here. I was, I was excited to be here, but I was struggling to find that inspiration. Well, you find me in bed now, all tucked in, and I to tell you what, it got really cold. Like, it's really cold outside, which I quite like, but to wrap up warm, because it's going to be a chilly one, and I can't put my diesel heater on, because there's people camping in tents not too far from my van, so A, I'll either choke them out, or B, the noise of the exhaust will drive them crazy, so, yeah, anyway, I can't remember where I left off with the video. Um, I think the the basic th thing I was saying was that I I was incredibly uninspired, worryingly so actually when I was driving off the ferry and into Iceland I was suddenly hit with all of this pressure. You know, this is a big trip for me, it's a uh, it's big investment, a lot of time, a lot of money and I just felt this pressure to perform and be in you know, be this photographer this excited and I was excited, don't get me wrong, but like, I just wasn't desperate to take a photograph. I was just, nothing was grabbing me at all. And I stopped off at that orange lighthouse. And that was, you know, it was kind of a shot, but it was quite an easy, easy, low-hanging fruit. And then I got really annoyed with a lot of uh, bad tourism. Um, and I appreciate that I too am a tourist, of course. But I like to think I'm a good one. And then, uh, and then I just went for a drive. Um, this evening and went down that gravel road and found that river bed 
and the beautiful light, nice long exposure. And although I only really took one image, just being out there alone, that's what it is, it's solitude. So anyway, I'm, I'm off and on, just repeating myself. You know, I was uninspired until the moment I was inspired, and that's a good thing to know. It means that any feelings of doubt are always temporary, they always pass. It's always the case, peaks and troughs, peaks and troughs. And when it happens, it happens. It might be amazing light, a beautiful subject, a sudden spark of inspiration. <sighs> right, uh, guys, I'll see you in the morning anyway. Um, yeah, I'll see you in the morning. I'm, I'm going to bed. Well, good morning everybody. Eee, it's windy and cold this morning, but I had a great night's sleep. I'm not gonna hang around too long. I'm gonna pack up the van and head west, probably about two hours west and we'll see what we see on the way. This is a lovely campsite, by the way. I think it's called Staffafell, Staffafell Nature and Camping. And it was 11 pounds for one night. They've got toilets, they've got a little, I believe they've got a kitchen area, like a, where you can actually order food. They'll cook food for you, I think. I didn't go and check it out, I just saw it. It's about ooh, 10 miles east of Vesterhorn, so it's a great location. Flat grounds, clean, beautiful views. What's not to love? But for me, it's time to move on. So this is a location I was gonna to come to last night, but the light was just completely wrong for it because we had blue skies to the northwest, which is where the sun was setting. So basically this whole view that you could see behind me, the view I was driving towards, uh, it would have been backlit and not very shootable. So now we have moody skies, lots of cloud, lots of atmosphere. I think it's far better suited to these conditions. Having a few problems with this one, actually. When I arrived, I was really excited and thought, oh yes, there's gonna be a certain certainty for a beautiful shot, but I've got this idea in mind of a panoramic. We have this peak, this prominent peak, looks a bit like Fleetwith Pike, if anyone knows the Lake District. And then they've got peaks either side of it, a couple of valleys, nice bit of light and cloud. But ah, man, the valley on the left is gaping, <laughs> it's massive, and the valley on the right is kind of closed off, so it's really unbalanced. So if I was to go for a panoramic with the Fleet With Pike peak in the middle, it just simply wouldn't work at all, It'd be pointless. So I can either find another composition, try and frame it in a different way, different aspect ratio, different viewpoint, or I can simply admire it and walk on. in South Coast Territory. Oh, I hate doing this. I hate being out in public with the camera, the video camera, but it's worth it. Trust me, it's worth it. Oh, all right, there's nothing I can do but just flipping well film this. Oh man. So, driving down the road to see this beautiful glacier wrapping around this dramatic cliff face with dark clouds and a deep valley. And I'm thinking, I need to shoot it. Where can I pull over? Where can I pull over? And there's nowhere. 
until I saw this huge car park, big new hotel visit center packed. Hundreds and hundreds of people. One viewpoint, which I'm currently walking towards. And uh, funny story, an Icelandic chap came up to me in the car park. He recognized me, he recognized the van. So sorry, mate, I've forgotten your name already. I couldn't pronounce it to begin with. And uh, he'd taken the exact shot that I saw from the road. So now I'm effectively copying his shot. So I apologize for that as well. That, I'm forgetting your name. Get on, get on. <laughs> It's cool, I like it, but there's a lot of ice at the foreground at the base of the image is a collection of icebergs and they're really distracting. I just want like a dark tunnel with this white circular glacier in it. How can I get that? I need to get a lot higher or a lot lower. Yeah. All right, I don't think that worked out as well as I'd hoped, but the chap who I bumped into in the car park he uh, told me about another place about a mile down the road and I could see it from up there. And that, I'm hoping, not only will give me a bit more privacy, but will uh, give me a much better view of that glacier. All right, let's go and have a look. All right, so we're looking for a gravel road coming off on the right-hand side. I think I've been there before, actually. It'll take me to a, uh, a glacier lagoon that's quite muddied water with uh, blue icebergs. Someone's hitchhiking. Sorry, I don't have any spare seats. And they're gonna, I hope they don't think I'm stopping when I'm, oh, they're on the side of the gravel road. Oh, they're gonna think I'm picking them up. They're gonna think I'm picking them up. Sorry, love. Sorry, no can do. <laughs> oh, she thought I was picking her up. <laughs> I would, I don't have a spare, spare, I've got those front seat. Right, I think this is the road that's gonna take me to where I need to be. Woo. All right, we have arrived. There's still plenty of cars here, but it's a lot quieter than the last spot and looks like we have a clear view of that sweeping glacier that I'm after. All right, let's have a look. Well, this angle works a lot better than the previous angle, but it's still not perfect. We've still got a lot of distracting foreground, but from here with a 16 by nine crop, I can just about make it work. We've got some beautiful light coming through now. Oh, this is fantastic. It's funny, it seems counterintuitive to want to crop out all of those icebergs, but to me, they offer nothing more than a distraction. They're just, chaotic at the bottom of frame and to compose them would be a real challenge and all I'm interested in is the sweeping glacier that I've seen for the past five ten miles uh, but yeah this is fantastic what a place man Iceland just never ever fails to deliver to the harsh realities of working on the road. I need to find Wi-Fi so I can upload next week's video, which for you guys would have been last week's video where I drove from Newcastle to Iceland. That's a big video. I think it's about 35, 40 minutes, 4K. Uh, so I either need to find like really good 4G or a very kind, patient cafe with excellent Wi-Fi, none of which I've yet been able to find. Uh, but that is, you know, that is life on the road. It's not all glamorous beautiful locations uh, although to be fair most of it is so for now I have to stop thinking about photography and drive as far west as I can I'll probably get to Vic for this evening uh, because tomorrow I'm meeting up with good old Thor you'll know Icelandic Thor and a, a few other guys a few other photographers names whom you may know and we're all driving into the highlands so tomorrow which will be next week's video the van goes into the highlands but for now I need to get moving drive uh, southwest and no doubt 
there's probably going to be photographic opportunities along the way. Right, so we have arrived in Vic and I've just pulled into the first campsite that I came to because I'm tired. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, I'm really tired, I'm really hungry. I need to get this video uploaded, which I'm gonna try and do on my mobile phone signal. Man, this is busy. It's just a world away from the campsite I stayed at last night, which was tranquil, peaceful. This is madness. This is exactly what you would expect for peak season popular tourist destination right i need to find somewhere to park um i was gonna say somewhere quiet but i don't think that's gonna happen uh, so busy look at this it's like it's like an expedition team straight ahead about 100 bright orange tents oh dear me somewhere around here is gonna have to do This past couple of days have certainly been interesting. It's funny, I started off by saying I was not gonna complain about anything and then all I've done is moan and complain. And I'm gonna finish the video with a few more complaints and then some optimism. But before those complaints and that optimism, let me just thank the sponsor of this video, without whom trips like this just wouldn't be possible. So I want to say thank you to Squarespace. If you don't know who Squarespace are, they're an all-in-one website building platform where you can log on, you can register your own domain, and you can build your own fantastic looking website using their very easy and intuitive drag and drop system. So if you don't know anything about building websites, but you want a nice fancy website for your photography, somewhere you can showcase your images, sell some prints, sell some calendars, and just generally have a place for people to visit and see your work, then definitely give Squarespace a go because it's so simple. You don't need to know anything about web coding. You don't need any experience. And within just a couple of hours, you can be well on your way to having a very professional looking website. So if you fancy giving that a go, go to squarespace.com forward slash Heaton and you'll get a free trial. And if you like your free trial, use the offer code Heaton and you get 10% off your first purchase. If you get stuck, they've got 24 seven customer care. But of course I always say go to YouTube, look for some tutorials. And honestly, I've done it myself. You'll have great looking website in no time at all. So let's start with Vic campsite. This place is just a means to an end. It's really uh, not a nice campsite at all. It's so surrounded by buildings. And yes, Vic's a beautiful place, but it's crowded, it's busy, the toilets. Oh, anyway, it's just, it's just a means to an end and it's not what I envisioned when coming to Iceland in my van. I want solitude and peace and quiet. And you can get that in Iceland in abundance, even in peak season but you can't get that really on the south coast, which is kind of where I am now. But tomorrow I'm gonna to wake up and drive into the highlands and that is where the real adventure will begin and the photography, I'm so excited for that, the driving, everything, meeting up with some friends, it's gonna be great. So make sure you tune in next week. But for now, I'm gonna to try to get some sleep and uh, yeah, things should start to slow down a bit from here on out. Uh, no, you know, no more big miles, and uh, hopefully everything will just, yeah. All right, anyway, I, I'm rambling on. Cheers, guys. I'll, I'll see you next week. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>